Welcome to Commander's Tech, Weapons and Warfare in Context. Sometimes, the most important tools of the battlefield are not ones that kill or even wound. They are the tools and technologies that make it possible to fight the battle or that give advantage to the side that uses them most effectively, even if they don't fire a bullet or otherwise cause injury. Likely, the most important tools of modern warfare that began to change the shape of war as early as the mid-19th century are communications technologies. From the telegraph and its lower tech but ingenious sibling, the heliograph, through radio and ultimately satellite and wireless networking, real-time, long-distance communication made things possible in warfare that couldn't even have been imagined a few decades earlier. During the German Wars of Unification, Prussian armies ran telegraph lines as they advanced, allowing constant communication between the general staff and the troops in the field. Wired communications using Morse code provided rapid and effective communication and thus coordination. This fit with the Prussian and later Imperial German war doctrine, calling for smaller, independent armies operating in coordination to outmaneuver larger, slower enemies. In the U.S. Civil War, the telegraph was important and was very important, in fact, a game changer for the Union Army. The British began using the heliograph in the mid 19th century, and it remained in use, at least as a reserve, until the 1960s. The heliograph uses an arrangement of mirrors to flash out Morse code in light pulses, allowing manual, light based communication across long, line-of-sight distances on clear and sunny days. Wired telephone lines became critical during the World Wars for communicating between the front and the headquarters. The Signal Corps was tasked with running and maintaining the phone lines, providing the officers with eyes and ears. Radio was available, but was clear channel, and thus could be easily intercepted by the enemy. Radio was usable by broadcasting in Morse code through a cipher, like with the Enigma machine. Today, we will be exploring one of the most groundbreaking technologies for both the military and civilian worlds, which brought near magical capabilities into reality. Radio. This will be the first of several videos that I'll be periodically doing, exploring the radio spectrum and computer technologies and their role in electronic warfare. What is radio? Essentially, radio is electromagnetic waves that radiate from a transmitter, which could be a natural transmitter like a star, but for our purposes will generally be an electronic device, and that can be detected and demodulated by a receiver. Think of it almost like a high frequency sound that causes a metal or glass or crystal object some distance away to vibrate in harmony. Meaningful information, including analog sounds and like speech and music and digital data, can be encoded and transmitted using radio waves, allowing information to be sent at the speed of light. And while this normally travels line of sight, diffusing in a line of sight pattern, due to some equally astonishing capabilities of both radio waves and the Earth's electromagnetic field, the ionosphere, it's possible to bounce radio waves off of the ionosphere in order to go around the curvature of the Earth, allowing for near instantaneous communication over long distances, even outside of line of sight. Radio waves travel line of sight, and in a diffusing pattern relative to the shape of the antenna, which can be a directional antenna or an omnidirectional antenna. Due to the nature of radio waves as electromagnetic radiation, there will be many signals occupying the same space and creating interference or noise that distort your signal. But just like talking louder in a noisy room can help you be heard better, we can increase the clarity and um, strength of our signal by increasing the power following an equation, P equals IV, or power equals current times voltage, which can also be expressed as P equals I squared R, power equals the current squared times the resistance. Another important concept when understanding radio is wavelength, which is the distance between successive peaks in an electromagnetic wave. 
a related concept is frequency, which is the speed of that wave. Basically, the speed at which the waves repeat. The longer the wavelength, the further the wave will travel, but the less information can be encoded with it. Wavelength and frequency have an inverse relationship. Wavelength is equal to C over frequency, where C equals the speed of light. So, let's talk for a second about antennas. There are many different types of antennas with different capabilities, depending on their shape and positioning. The most basic antennas are the dipole antenna, which is like a wire with a feed point in the middle, like this, except, well, this, or something like this, which is a monopole antenna, also called a whip or a mast, which is a basically a wire with a feed point on one end. This broadcasts in all directions except for the, except for right along the length, the direction that the wire is pointing. Other types of antennas, like radio dishes, are capable of concentrating directional signals at higher wavelengths and going longer distances. These are useful for talking to things like spacecraft and satellites. When Marconi and others first discovered and harnessed radio waves, while groundbreaking technologically, it had a major drawback for military use. Analog voice transmissions were clear and could be listened to by anyone with a receiver set to the right frequency. The first solution to this weakness, as was used in the World Wars, particularly in World War II, was for the radio operator to broadcast in coded language, and even better was to use Morse code in which the letters were fed through a cipher before being broadcast. The receiver would need to transcribe the Morse code and then decode the cipher back into normal language in order to read the message. During World War II, communication using enciphered Morse code was a famous element of the war, and along with the infancy of radar, a major part of how electronic warfare was waged. Most nations had some system of ciphers and code books, but the Germans were particularly famous for their semi-computerized cipher system, the Enigma machine. With Enigma, an operator set parameters based on a daily codebook and then typed in a message into the machine, which outputted the encoded message. The encoded message was transmitted by a radio operator using Morse code. The receiver would need to know the daily settings and have their own Enigma machine to then reverse the cipher and output the original message. Intercepting and interpreting Enigma communications required both a copy of the codebook and a working Enigma machine. So a major objective of MI5 and the OSS was to capture one. Of course, these are all very human intensive interventions to make up for the inherent weakness of analog radio communication for military purposes. The digital revolution of the latter half of the 20th century changed all of that by making computerized radio possible with both digitizes, encrypts, and transmits voice communications, and then receives and decrypts on the other end, essentially transparently to the operator. The single-channel ground and airborne radio system is the family of interoperable systems used by the modern military for unified communications, making use of computerized technologies to encrypt or otherwise secure the communications. The same basic units, in different configurations, can be used in a man-portable version or in a vehicle mounting, including in aircraft. SyncGARs support both voice and data communications, including access to the combat internet, and so can be used to transmit mission intelligence to units in the field, as well as to provide voice contact to the radio controllers and to the commanding officers. In order to provide secure communication, sync guards include onboard systems for generating or inputting and storing cryptographic keys for authenticating and interacting with encrypted networks, using the ANCD, the Automated Network Control Device. This is not so different than using a certificate manager with public key infrastructure in a civilian IT organization, and it automates the process to prevent human error. 
Other SyncGuard's accessories and components include the computer subsystems and GPS units, all of which can download relevant mission information from command and make it available to units in the field as needed. Together, SyncGuard's make up the nodes of the Combat Net Radio, which makes use of SyncGuard's and tactical satellites, TACSAT, along with tactical radio operators to connect ground, air, and sea forces together to coordinate operations and share intel in real time. This includes digital links to artillery fire support, the AFADTS, which allows forward observers, including aerial assets, to automatically report targeting info to artillery, allowing real-time fire effect info. This is critical as modern artillery can have ranges in the dozens or even over a hundred miles. This has come a long way since the days of semaphores and hot air balloons for directing long-range and high-angle artillery fire. It should be clear that radio, particularly with encryption and other anti-interception and anti-jamming countermeasures, is absolutely critical to the kind of joint operations that a modern military is called on to perform. And preserving control of the electromagnetic spectrum is one of the most important specialized roles in the modern military. The tactics and operations of controlling the spectrum while seeking to undermine the enemy's use of the spectrum is what is termed electronic warfare. Electronic warfare can be defined as any of a number of offensive and defensive applications of the electromagnetic spectrum, particularly operations to assert control of the spectrum or defend against attempts to seize control of the spectrum and to deny the opposition access to the spectrum. This can include jamming, locating and disrupting enemy transmission capabilities, and the interception and impersonation of enemy assets. This is essentially like social engineering or a man-in-the-middle attack in cybersecurity. Radio jamming can be as simple as broadcasting noise over a frequency the enemy is using for communication, which of course can be countered by changing frequency. Modern military radio systems like the SyncGars include anti-jamming capabilities such as frequency hopping, FH, where the radio network moves through a sequence of random frequencies consistently managed by the control channel and the computer system so that authenticated users notice little to no disruption, but unauthenticated, unauthorized listeners or jammers will be unable to intercept. To illustrate some of the capabilities of modern radio networks of the type used by military and security forces, I'll demonstrate accessing the digital trunk networks used for local fire and safety and monitoring the channels. To do this, I'm using a Nualec Nestor Smart SDR software-defined radio and a portable monopole antenna in the SDR trunk software package on a Windows PC. Beforehand, I installed the drivers for the SDR dongle and pulled down the latest build of SDR trunk. I also retrieved the audio libraries needed for SDR trunk JMB Audio Library. Last, I checked on Radio Reference to find the channels used by local police, fire, and EMS, as well as what standard of trunking they're using, it's P25. To start, we plug in the SDR dongle and then run the SDR trunk batch file. This will start the radio and monitor. We set the frequency in our playlist to the talk about frequency for local public safety and then fine tune the radio to get the, cr the, get, to get the control channel. As we watch, the big spikes are transmissions, and we see several radio conversations going on. We have a little interference, so no audio was captured, and what was had a metallic ring to it. As we see, some of the streams showing up are encrypted, and we can't access those today, but this just illustrates the complexity of modern digital radio. Control of communications is essential to modern operations. Control of the spectrum is critical for superiority on the modern battlefield. 
Mastery of communications has evolved significantly since the 19th century, and the nations that best master communications are at a marked advantage. We can see this today in the Ukraine conflict, where Russian forces have been degraded to using clear channel communications and even personal cell phones on the battlefield, which are in turn being intercepted and eliminated due to the superior communications technology that NATO provided to Ukraine. Similarly, this remains one of the U.S. military's greatest advantages from our network of tactical satellites and our system of military radios, even as the Sinkars themselves age, the original system was adopted in 1987, and the Department of Defense has been looking for uh, replacements or ways to upgrade or replace the systems. Electronic warfare is a huge topic, and this is only scratching the surface of it. In future episodes, I plan to explore more elements of electronic warfare, including radar, both its evolution and its capabilities, as well as cybersecurity and cyber warfare. Tune in next time. Thanks for watching.